Morning. <laughs> Speedy kids. I'm in Michigan. I'm here for the CrossFit Games. One of the joys of being a property developer is, or property investor is your rent comes in whether you're in the country or not. Well, most of it does. And then you have to chase late payments. So go and have a look at those videos. Okay, let's talk about tenant management. So here's my theory. And um, it works for us. It's the broken window theory. You know, in New York, they had that famous thing where they just, one of the mayors, I forget who it was actually. <laughs> Morning. 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 There Hi. you go. <laughs> there you go. International filming. Um, yeah, uh, in New York, when they were looking to really turn the city around uh, quite a number of decades ago, they had this broken window theory um, where they would take off graffiti and mend broken windows because they wanted to show physically um, just the little tiny indicators that this city is well looked after and so any kind of behaviour is just not going to be tolerated. And I, I really follow that with my tenant management. For, it's the broken window theory, 100%, New York inspired. Bring it back to Bristol for my portfolio. So I'm black and white. I would never in my life rip a tenant off. I would never even, it would never even cross my mind to try and attempt to keep a penny of their money that wasn't, um, almost legally required to be kept if you sue to me because they made damages or whatever it just just don't, wouldn't even think about it however i am quite black and white so uh, we have a couple of tenants that often pay a little bit less than their rent we will chase them we had a guy who was due uh, 500 pounds rent he's often late i'm seriously considering no longer contracting with him i.e just serving a section 21 no fault eviction saying thank you very much but we don't really want your business anymore because he's just a pain. Um, so the last time he paid £499, so you can imagine how that got my goat. It's just rude. So we chased them for the pound. Now I know that sounds ridiculous and you can sit and giggle at me, but it is the New York broken window theory. Because I'm not going to change that person's behaviour. They continue to behave poorly in terms of financial payment. They haven't paid this month and we're on day five um, and by day ten we go legal. But what it does is if they are in the house and they're in a shared house with five other people and they start moaning that the um, mean landlord is chasing for a pound, that actually tells the other tenants that we're really on the ball, that we're going to take no nonsense from anybody. So I'm not actually trying to change that person's behaviour. I'm letting it be known that we're very clear and bounded as a landlord. Um, another kind of example would be we inspect every three months and we have a clause in our contract where it's £50 if you fail the inspection fee. Now, I do not want £50 from a tenant. It causes a bit of bad blood and it's a pain in the neck to get it. And it's just a pain, frankly. And okay, you've got five people in there, so it's 250 quid. Well, in the grand scheme of life, what's it, you know, come on. But what, it, what I'm interested in is making the tenants appreciate we every time we inspect we send them texts we send them emails we give them a very clear long list um how to pass a, a successful interim inspection where they hey but remember oh look there's a chipmunk can you see uh, remember that your um there is a 50 pound failure fee if you fail um we will always chase that 50 pounds fee now we know that 50 percent of people that get the 50 pound failure fee will move out my properties are pretty desirable. I'm not that worried about people moving out because what's happening generally is the people who are messy don't like the fact that we enforce the failure fee. Right, we're just going over a railway line now. Here we go. We enforce the failure fee because we're really enforcing good behaviour, which is you stay in my properties, you keep them clean. I give them to you clean, you keep them clean. So it's... Low level OCD, I know, it's attention to detail, it's clear black and white boundaries. And at that stage, oh, oh um, we find we get very little friction tenant relationships. We will have friction where somebody gets a failure fee. We know that, so we remove the emotion, we put everything in writing, and we certainly don't have many conversations with them at that point because we're not gonna argue about it. It's in the contract, it's black and white, don't mess around. But we will enforce our contractual obligations, rights, whatever you want to call them, very, very strongly 
so that our tenants understand that this is a very boundaried business. Um, they've got very clear rules. We, we also give them, uh, we, we don't enforce it like a surprise. We give them lots of helps and inf help and information. So tips on how to pass an inspection, tips on how to pass a final checkout inspection. Here's a checklist of what paperwork you need to do. We explain to them if they're late that we have a 10 day process and on day 10 we take legal action um, and that will, could potentially result in a CCJ against them. We're very clear and we're very boundaried and explain to them but we're boundaried and as a result I have a 100% filled portfolio at the moment. Sometimes it dips down a little bit but generally it's like at the moment it's 100% filled. Um, my entire life and I turn over thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds every month and I've done that for 10 months, uh, 10 years sorry, my entire life I made £2.50 pence on bad debt and that's because we're boundaried and um, I don't have any diddies in my house and if we did have them we'd be very glad to get their leaving notice or we would serve them as section 21 so um, if a tenant was rude you know we did have a tenant for example that left a dog in a house you know you're not allowed dogs you know and the reason you're not allowed dogs is they're going to cause a lot of damage they left the dog in the house unaccompanied so we called the RSPCA we called the tenant and said look you really got to deal with this dog and he threatened to kill my employee now he phoned back and apologized but I've never done that in my life so I'm certainly not keeping that tenant ever that tenant is going if you have that kind of verbal response that you feel it's acceptable gone so a bit of a ramble but really broken window syndrome is how I intend to operate it does mean that I need to be a good landlord too and I would hope that you know 95% of the time if not 100% of the time we succeed in doing that so we we have a repair sheet we pay a full-time um, handyman to work full-time on the properties I want to repair things quickly but it does mean I expect them to play their part and I'm very clear and very boundaried when they don't play their part I hope that's useful for those of you that are new to landlording the whole thing of tenants wrecking your house I've never had it yet I, I will at some point <laughs> but I've never had it yet and uh, I think most people are pretty decent but I think you've also um, got to give some very clear boundaries because tenants can push it a bit and it's a bit like water trickling downhill we are not the path of least resistance anyway good luck subscribe to the YouTube channel hop over to our website we've got tons of stuff for you guys I'm creating more and more free stuff as well as really fantastic paid stuff you know the packs and the workshops and things like that so have a look at thegoodpropertycompany.co.uk I I'm off to the CrossFit Games in Madison, Wisconsin. And look at these cute, oh, look at this one, houses. Nice.